Hey guys, welcome back to Supercar Street Racing, and today we have the big reveal of the golf cart audio system. It is 99.9% .9 finished, and we put a good 30 or 40 hours of work into it. And I wanted to go over the list here before we actually show you the cart, so you can see what eventually worked, what eventually didn't, and what I ended up ordering after the fact in order to get this project all wrapped up. So first of all, let's take a look at the list here, and let's go down some and get to the first page of items that we ordered so let's keep going keep going keep going there was a lot of stuff ordered for this let's go down 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 keep going keep going and this is where it starts so this is the first thing that we'll look at this is the actually designed for golf carts it's a 48 volt voltage meter with a usb charger it does say quick charge on it however it is not a quick charge it is just a standard charge so i gave it a bad review because it is not a quick charger so shouldn't say quick charger if it's not one um that was mounted in the dash first and then i realized it wasn't a quick charger so i bought a couple of them you'll see here shortly Next here on the list, we've got the SCAR Audio. So this is the SDR-12. This is the woofer that I bought for the enclosure and it's pretty awesome. Two voice coils, four ohms per voice coil, which if you parallel that leads a two ohm load. Series would be eight ohms, parallel would be two. Next we got the uh, recoil bus bars and those went in the front of the cart here and those were for actually putting 12 volts up front of the cart so that if I have other things that need 12 volts up there like lights or anything like that I could just run directly off of the bus bar and I don't need to run all the way to the back. Next we have um, the tubing. So this is flexible tubing for wiring and I have to say I don't like the way that the ends fray out and I tried heating them and I tried the uh, heat gun, I tried fire and it really the ends are just kind of flared out and, and frayed when you use this stuff. This middle guy right here is a USB power uh, in like converter. So what it does is it takes 12 volts, gives you a female type B USB connector and I use that to actually charge the tablet. And surprisingly enough, it does quick charge. It doesn't super fast charge, it quick charges. Now we got the B-Box single 12 inch woofer enclosure. It is angled, it works perfectly right in the back of the golf cart and fits between the two rails of the seat. It's pretty awesome. It's got a single terminal there and the woofer is mounted in there with some polyfill. Now our Invertec uh, 500 watt car power inverter here and that takes the 12 volts in the golf cart so after the voltage reducer this guy creates 110 volt power so you can run things like inside your house like typical everyday plug into the wall type stuff. I got a new crimp tool with some crimp connectors that you also heat shrink which is great. I've never owned these before and they're absolutely awesome. Next best thing to soldering and heat shrinking but they're great. You crimp once and then you take your heat gun and you shrink. Got some VC Link RCA splitters. I ended up not using those, but I kept them because I probably will use them in the future. I got some Velcro mounting squares, which I used to mount the Bluetooth adapter on the back of the seat and then put a screw above it to kind of wedge it in between the amp so it wouldn't go anywhere. This is the voltage reducer. So this guy right here takes 48 volts in your golf cart and makes 12 volts for other accessories like amplifiers, lights, anything 12 volts like a car would use this guy's awesome because it's 60 amps it can handle every bit of the amperage of my amplifier and then other things like lighting and things like that that was one of the more expensive but not the most expensive things on the list it's actually might be the most expensive since I didn't have to buy anything big I already had the amplifier which was the Rockville Phenom I'll show you guys that in a minute um, ended up sending these RCA cables back I got some locally that were shorter Got this uh, copper wire terminal connector kit here with heat shrink too. It has the big rings that allow you to go over some battery posts that some of the other things don't have perfect for what I was doing. And we got the master disconnect switch. What this switch does is it takes out of the 48 volt voltage reducer, which you saw down here, and it feeds this switch. And from out of the switch, uh, it goes to the um, actually back up 
power from the batteries goes into the switch out of the switch it goes right to the voltage reducer and so that cuts off everything that's got 12 volts because the voltage reducer feeds it so that means when i go somewhere and walk inside i can turn off the master power and nobody can mess with anything on the golf cart all right we got our silky polyfill fiber here for inside of the actual enclosure i forgot to stuff it in the dash i meant to do that but honestly it gets everywhere i don't know how useful it would be in the dash but uh, i did buy it for that and did not use it because i had already mounted uh, the speakers and stuff and i could probably still flip my hand through the dash hole and put it in there but i think i'm going to hold off because it just gets on everything it's a mess Infinity Kappas I ended up returning because they didn't have grills and I had to have grills. Um, some RCA cables that I ended up using for feeding the epicenter. Here's the actual fuse block that we come, we come out of our 48 volt voltage reducer. We go into this fuse block that feeds all the 12 volts including the 12 volt blocks up front and fuses them. Let's go to the next page. Next page here, starting at the bottom. This is a fusible circuit breaker for the amplifier only. So instead of having a fuse that's gonna, you know, maybe bust and you have to put a new fuse in, this is a circuit breaker. So you just reset it. Super easy, super affordable, 11 bucks. You can't go wrong with something like that. This magnetic phone mount thing is for going to behind the carbon fiber dash and the other part goes on the tablet and it's supposed to hold. But since the way I'm using it is not the way it's designed, it's designed to stick onto a dash and you put this on your phone and it sticks right to it i uh, ended up ordering a second one which is on there now and i just ordered three and four to go on the side so that hopefully i get a really nice magnetic mount for the tablet and it won't go anywhere when i hit bumps i ordered these guys here these uh, 83 watt qc3 multi-port uh, chargers after the first charger wasn't a super fast charger i did try to charge my phone with this yesterday and it just said fast charging it didn't say super fast charging or anything like that so i don't know why that's the case i don't know if it's my cable or what but yeah it didn't ultra charge or ultra fast or super fast it just was just fast charging my phone which i guess that's fine but i bought it for super fast charging and it does not do that on my phone i got one in the back of the cart conveniently you can plug your phone and lay it on the uh, seat uh, right beside you, uh, you can lay a tablet on the seat beside you, charge right behind you, or you can do it in the front on the dash. You will see that in the video soon, guys. Next, I finally upgraded my tools. I've been suffering with this Hitachi tool set that has been a problem for years. It's probably six or seven years old now. I went ahead and found this on sale for $149, and I did buy the combo kit with the drill, the impact driver, two batteries, and a charger, and I absolutely love it it is worth every penny pre-workout was not for the golf cart although it'll pump you up and get you ready for working on the cart i bought some jigsaw blades because i did buy the dewalt xr jigsaw separately so that i could use that for the cart install and i've always needed one 303 aerospace protectant i used for like uh, detailing the golf cart afterwards so that is part of it I bought the actual Infinity Kappas with the grill. I ended up returning them because I bought some JBL GTO 620s locally, so I returned these. And we have clips for cable management, and I used those on the install to um, screw my wires up and hold them really nicely on the back seat, and you will see that too. And the last page here. Go to the bottom. Uh, sent these uh, this wire back ended up using my own speaker wire that I already have here is the second magnetic mount that I bought for the tablet to mount on the dash and it was undeliverable so I never got that one and I had to order another one here is the Bluetooth adapter the one I had actually had a short in the power and I ended up dismantling the whole entire back of the cart and it was just this Bluetooth adapter but I redid everything very nicely and it looks a lot better now screen protector for the tablet i am going to return i don't want glass i didn't see that it was tempered glass so it's going back i needed some scissors for a lot of things i broke them and hurt my hand in the process when they broke it went right through my hand so i ordered scissors this is a 256 megabyte sd card for the tablet and i needed that for the tablet for the golf cart here is 
a second magnetic phone mount that I put on the bottom of the dash mount and I have one on the top and that still may not be enough. I bought some more zip ties for the install. I was completely out. I got a DeWalt bit set, not for the cart, but I needed one anyway. So I bought a whole bit kit. It'll be here tomorrow. I bought a custom engraved nameplate for the epicenter control, which you will see in the video. And it says epicenter and has minimum and maximum. It's gonna stick on right below this cool knob that I made in the back, guys. You're gonna love that. And then for the left and right behind the dash to hold the tablet better, I bought these two more magnetic mounts that were a way better deal and they will be here tomorrow and I will stick them on behind the dash and then put the metal plates on the tablet in the back and I'll have four magnets to hold that to the dash which you will see out here in a second so let's get right to it guys on supercar street racing All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. Supercar Street Racing and Brad here. And today we have a tour of the golf cart audio system. I just finished everything completely, including buttoning up all the wiring. It was a good three or four day project. So I am going to show you around the golf cart. And we will start in the rear. I got a little light here for us. So in the back of the golf cart here, we have a 12 inch woofer in a nice pre-made enclosure there that still needs to be kind of um, bolted down. And it does have the SCAR 12 inch woofer, dual voice coil, four ohm per voice coil. The voice coils are paralleled, yielding a two ohm load. We have a, we're listening to royalty free music by the way, no copyright. We have a quick connect here, made out of a, just a standard plug, wall plug. I put a female and a male on so that that can come out at any time and be easily pulled out. And if we pull out the box here, you can see that plate is open to let the base go through the cart. Yeah, it just kind of sits in there and just needs a strap to, to be perfect. And that is the base part of the sound system. Moving on to the amp rack, everything is located on the back of the seat. On this side, we have our voltage inverter. This supplies 110 volts to whatever you need. And also, it has a USB plug. It's actually powering the Bluetooth adapter as well. Between that, we have the amplifier, five channel Rockville amplifier. And then we have the Bluetooth adapter. All this stuff will be in the description. That is the Bluetooth adapter right up here. Let me get you a better view of it. There is the Bluetooth adapter. And so it has actually two sets of outputs. The mini output up the top there is actually feeding the subwoofer channels and the RCA outputs are feeding channels one, two, three, and four and are Y adapted to that. Here is the fuse for the amp. It's actually a circuit breaker, as you can see here. Rather than get a fuse that blows, you pay a, a few dollars more and you can get an actual circuit breaker. Below that, we have our voltage reducer. This guy takes 48 volts and makes it into 12 volts and it's 60 amps, 720 watts to be able to handle the stereo system. And then right here on the back of the back seat, we have the EP1600X Blaupunkt, which is an epicenter clone. Moving down to the back of the cart here underneath the seat, we have JBL GT. GTO, let me make sure I'm saying that right, because they're right here. JBL GTO 620s. Two six and a half inch component speakers. Those are fed by channel three and four. We have a super high output 65 watt USB type C and USB type B charger. 
We have our epicenter control. I ordered a actual metal custom engraved plate that says epicenter and has positive and minimum. And I moved the LED also off of the control panel onto the actual back of the cart. So that is the rear of the cart. Front of the cart, we have another pair of JBL GTO 620s and they are six and a half inch two ways and they are about $115 a pair. So I bought two pairs of those to round out the system. Let's move around to the other side here where we have better access to the dash. We're listening to no copyright music here because we will get copyright strikes. Taking a look at the dash here, this is the carbon fiber dash. Now, of course, it's not real carbon fiber. It's carbon fiber wannabe. And then there's a different pattern carbon fiber on the dash overlay. Moving to the actual dash, we have a Samsung A7 Lite tablet. It is about an eight and a half inch tablet. It does have a SIM card available. I ordered it, so it will have its own internet connection. It actually is being charged by this cable, which runs in behind the dash, and behind the dash there is a block with positives and negatives of 12 volts. There's a USB, 12 volt to USB power adapter in the back that's feeding this guy right here. And as you can see, it is charging, and it even, unbelievably, I didn't think it would, it is actually fast charging, which is amazing. Below that, in the dash, a little crooked, um, but it can be moved. We have our voltmeter. So this shows the voltage going to the 48 volt batteries. Right now, the charger is on and active. So that is why you are seeing the 57 volts. The batteries are charging. That is normal during a charge. Right next to that, we have another super high speed USB charger. This one, the button is kind of jacked up on. I don't know what happened to it, but it's like the button is pushed in. I'm not even showing you on the camera. There it is. The only thing I don't like about these guys is they turn off between uh, power cycles. I wish they would stay on. I looked everywhere for some that would stay on and they don't exist. So this one, the little button is kind of like mashed in. I don't get it. The other one back here in the back is not. So yeah, that will round off the golf cart audio tour. And then of course down here we have our extreme mat. Now, there are some more things we gotta get done to the golf cart. We need to do all the bushings in the front. We have a bushing set um, laying over here on the top of the lawnmower over there. And Joe is going to help me. Um, another cool thing about having a tablet. Oh, by the way, the tablet is magnetic mounted. There's a magnet stuck to the back of the dash inside. And then this has a magnet. Um, plate on the back of it, a metal plate. However, it is not working great. So I ordered a second one for the bottom. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna order number three and number four for the side so that this thing doesn't move. Because you can see, it comes off fairly easy. I'm hoping another one will prevent that from happening. And if not, a third and fourth will definitely keep it on there. So another thing cool about having the tablet. So I got subscription YouTube so I can actually minimize YouTube and still hear music. But we can go to the speedometer. And it's supposed to actually spin. Yeah. I don't know why it doesn't stay. I don't know why it won't stay on uh, landscape, but anyway, got your speedometer, got your digital speedometer, and you got your map. You can do all that with this tablet while you're moving. And also you've got your good old Waze. If you wanna use Waze, it's on here as well, right here. And anything else that you can use on a Android tablet, you can use right here. Some of this stuff is junk like meat, Samsung free, we can disable, no we can't, <coughs> excuse me guys, anyway that is a tour 
of the golf cart audio system. As you can see, it came out pretty good. It's clean. It's about 98% what I wanted it to be. And the reason being is when you have to put the seats on, you have to leave some slack in some of the cables. So there's a couple of cables that I wasn't too super excited about having to uh, leave slack in. But the rest is pretty clean, as you can see here. And of course we have our beautiful epicenter control. And guys, that's going to do it for the audio system tour on the golf cart. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will see you next time on Supercar Street Racing.